to episode 102 of the web sensation known as Triple Threat Talk. What are you doing? Are you roboting? I've got all this room. Yeah, I know. All, all this room. Jimmy, Jimmy's stepdad got hit by a tree. Yeah. Um, so we want to wish we want to wish him a speedy recovery. Absolutely. Hope it's okay. Yeah. It's just you don't expect to hear that. Yeah. Hey uh, guys. Hey yeah. Um, funny story. Uh, <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, Steve got hit by a tree. Usually, usually here. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it. Usually here the other way around. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, but we do want to. Absolutely. We, he, he's he's okay, so yeah, you can kind of joke about it. So, they, uh, they just don't want him to like get a knot on his head. Right, yeah. they, they don't want him to be a long concussion or whatever. Yeah. You know, everybody else is at the house and or not at the house. So Jimmy right. wanted to be there. He's stepping up. Um, but yeah, you, we, we haven't done we haven't done a, a two person show in a while. Yeah, it's so. been a while. So. Usually we have a replacement, but usually, with, but with Rick a fail. Ricker, Ricker went to Ohio. Ohio. Kendra went to Atlanta. Yeah. Um, Brian's at OVW, so that yeah. pretty much runs so. the gamut of people. Yeah. So, so triple threat. Th- wouldn't you say that though? You know, that's like shows you. You know, that's like six members of yeah. the Triple Threat Talk family. And Stan, Stan, Stephanie, yeah. Stan, yeah. Stan, yeah. Stan, Stan, yeah. So, so. we're kind of running out of people. So, but anyways, I'm drinking Pepsi Max from a glass today. He's being fancy. Pepsi Max. But anyways, today on the show we are going to cover a little bit of tennis. I know you're surprised. I'm a little surprised, and I don't know anything about tennis. That's how surprised he is. Uh, NASCAR, uh, uh, some interesting news from the world of NASCAR. Uh, We'll tell you who won the Women's College World Series and how they did it. We'll talk about some NHL and some NBA playoffs, Final and we will up. talk about the scandal that has rocked the MLB for the last decade. Seems like forever. It's finally coming to a head, and we'll talk about it on the show, Triple Threat Talk. But coming up first, as always, as always. Fuser Questions, read today by Mr. Brandon Demira. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Yes. So, first question comes from the Buck in Five. He wants to know... What are some TV shows that you like to watch right now? Well, right now we're filming, so right. I can't so, really. So watch. I don't like to watch anything right now. That would be rude and inconsiderate to you at home or wherever you're watching. So that's just a weird question. But moving no, on. I, I think I like Big Bang Theory. Oh, yeah. um, who doesn't? Who doesn't? I kind of like. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to Agents of Shield. I know it's not on right now. Right. But it will be. He meant right now. Um, Batman, uh, the new Batman series uh, that's starting up. Young Justice is on, and uh, Transformers Prime probably round up mine. Um, I'm gonna go in terms of days. Uh, Revolution. Just I know we have a question here for about Revolution later from uh, against the odds. I'm gonna address that later too. But Revolution just ended. Love the show. I'm glad they got a second season. I'm surprised NBC didn't cancel it like they do most things. Um, I, I like that right now. Um, Hell's Kitchen's still on. I'm loving that. Um, again, I like you know, again. Who does not like Big Bang Theory? Hey, that just ended too. It's it's a season. It's crazy. It's been on since two thousand and seven. It's been, it's been on a while. Six seasons. Six years. Um, South Park's come back in September. I'm super pumped for that. No, it's not right now. But South Park is on sort of right now. It's on every day at ten thirty, and then on Wednesdays it has like a marathon, whatever. But um, you know, a lot of my shows are ending. I mean, I know in July the newsroom comes back. It's oh, on. Duck Dynasty. Sorry. Thank you. Anyway, uh, Newsroom comes back in July. I'm looking forward to that. Hell on Wheels comes back in August. I'm not too thrilled because it's on a Saturday, which is not a good slot because it used to be on Sundays, but they're trying to work around it because Walking Dead comes back not too long after it, so we shall see what happens. But definitely, uh, a lot of my shows aren't on right now, so I'm just waiting. Pong Stars, too. I like Pong Stars. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I will be checking out Falling Skies. I just have to find out who has seasons one and two yeah. that I can borrow. I thought it was on season two. I don't know. season three. My, I think it's season Cause three. Because... I'm not gonna lie. Like sometimes when I'm working at GameStop and they have like promotional stuff for games or certain things on the TV, sometimes it gets kind of annoying. They show the same things over and over and over again. But I kept seeing the trailer for the new season of Falling Skies. I never saw it. I mean, I saw promotions for it because Noah Wiley was in. He's obviously was a big star at ER, so he's getting a lot of uh, publicity for it. And so a good looking show like sci-fi stuff like that. So it looks really good. I never really watched it. It's Walking Dead with aliens. And then I saw this trailer for it. It looks really awesome. And now I'm gonna. I've never heard of it. And I'm gonna check if it's on Netflix. See if season one. It's on not. There. And there goes my dreams and hopes for that. So it's not. But yeah, I, I checked. I it's, wrote a very definitive. Hulu. Letter. Hulu. I'm not sure if it's on Hulu. Okay. Well, anyway, it's not. It's not on Pepsi Max at all. All right, bring it back. So now another question from Buck and Five, and apparently, he says the three of us. So obviously, 
or not. The two of us. Uh, so, so I'll just write two. <laughs> <laughs> I really did write it. Uh, now he thinks he did. Now he, he's, he's saying that the show is now the Wild Thornberries, apparently. So, Buck and Five wants to know if the two of you each had the power to talk to, un, to talk to and understand any animal, which animal would it be and why? So apparently we're the Thornberries. We're, we're Nigel and Eliza Thornberry. I would have to say penguins because penguins are awesome. Penguins are pretty awesome. Um, I would say either a dog or a cat because they're always either... I don't want to know what my cat's think. Well, the thing is... Well, I hope not. But no, the reason I say that is because dogs are always barking and yapping and cats are always meowing and stuff like that and just like, what the hell do you want from me? What are they saying? So I want to know what the heck is going on in that brain of theirs why they have to just keep yelling away and, and what is going on up there. That's what I want to know. And... Thank you for the animal question, and no, I am not Nigel Thornberry, even though I can do the voice, but we'll move on from that. So now, another question from Buck and Five. He's got a lot today. Uh, if you could drive any vehicle from a movie or a TV show, which one would it be, and why? The new Batmobile. If you need an explanation, I refer you to see the new Batmobile. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I could go... It's so hard to pick. You can pick the you know the old Batmobile from like the, the Michael Keaton movies when that was really good design. The new Batmobile and the newer movies. Yeah, but those don't run over things. They could. And they don't have a well. They do kind of have a jetpack. Yeah. Um. But I have to pick one over every other, and it's probably the um ec not the Ecto one. Wow. The one from Back to the Future. The, the DeLorean. The DeLorean. The yeah. time machine. Time machine DeLorean. I just it's so cool that like you know obviously Back to the Future. I, I love Back to the Future and. One of my favorite movie franchises of all time. I just love the fact that, you know, one of the more popular lines of the movie is 88 miles an hour, so once it hits 88, you're going to see some serious, I won't go there. So, another question from Buck and Five. Good lord. Good gosh, who edits these questions? Anyway, not me, somebody else. Must be some robot. They're taking over. Do you agree with Kurt Angle being the next inductee into the TNA Hall of Fame, or if not? Who do you think the inductee should have been? All right, so... Me and Postmaster are watching Slammiversary, and if he were here, we'd have, we'd have a conversation about maybe we'll save it for next week or, or not, because I think he wants to have a discussion, me and him, about it. Um, I didn't like the fact that Colonel got inducted to the TNA Hall of Fame because he's... And this is what we would discuss. Basically, we're to, TNA needs to find themselves. Back in 2007, 2008, their stars were AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, people that they found other places. They need to go out into the world and go to these independent shows and find newer talent. Not just grab talent that's been released from W for certain reasons or, or whatever. Um, you know, I, I think it should have been someone like Samoa Joe or AJ Styles or something like that. You know, it, Kurt Angle being inducted to the Hall of Fame, I just, I, I just don't see why they would do that. I mean, maybe it's just sticking to WWE because when Kurt Angle leaves TNA, he's probably going to go to WWE. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame anyway. Maybe that's what I don't know what TNA's motive for him putting the Hall of Fame, but I think it should have been AJ Styles. He's been there since day one. The guy's a phenomenal athlete. He's not good on the mic, but not many people. You know, that's that's one. That's a conversation for another day. But T, uh, AJ Styles is a phenomenal athlete. He's been there since the beginning. I think he should have gone in. Uh, Postmaster and I discussed this off the air on, on the phone uh, a couple days ago. I completely agree. I think. Uh, they should maybe have like AJ Styles or Samoa Joe or somebody like that yeah, uh, because, been there for the long haul. because it could very well be that Kurt Angle was only inducted so he wouldn't go back to the WWE or, other, or some other thing. Maybe it was part of a deal that we don't know about, mm -hmm. but either way, it was not a smart move I mean, on the part of TNA. I mean, Kurt Angle wants to go back. It's, it's not like it's a mystery thing. He wants to go back to WWE and finish his career there. It's not, a, you know, it's, it's not an unknown thing. Um, against all it's 20 wants to know, what are your thoughts on the show Revolution? Um, I have not seen it, but I have many friends that watch it, and they all say it is phenomenal and a very good show. It's very good. I remember seeing the promos for it way back when. It's been a long season. It just ended uh, not that long ago. It started, like I think, September of last year, so it's been, it's been on for a while. Um, it's a very good show. Uh, basically, I'll just give you the rundown if you don't know what it's about. Basically, what happens... Um, the power goes out, like it gets shut out, and the whole the whole the whole world is out without power. And then eventually, during the season, they find these like these magic necklaces that they can restore the power for a certain period of time. And it, it's a very good show. Um, surprisingly, the the guy that the main villain from it, David, I think his name is David Lyons. He was on a failed show called The Cape. It had like ten episodes. It was supposed to have eleven, and the show did so bad ratings wise. They didn't have the episode eleven on TV. It was like on a web. It was on the is on the internet. So, but good for him to be on another show on NBC. I'm, I'm sure he's glad he didn't get canceled this time because last time he was on a show it got canceled. But it's a very good show. Very good acting. Good a good action. Um, you know, and, and Tracy, whatever her name is, I can't pronounce. Is not bad to look at either. So, against all odds, another question. 
with games like Heavy Rain, Mass Effect, Bioshock Infinite Dishonored, and Red Dead Redemption, just to name a few, having better stories than most movies, but why does the media still not take gaming as a serious work of art like they do a movie? Even though they rip off stuff from games a lot. I disagree with your premise. I think people, I think Hollywood does take it seriously. Uh, you've had, uh, uh, mainly from the horror aspect, but Resident Evil, um, Silent, Silent Hill, Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Uh, and then from other franchises like Tomb Raider, um, and then you had uh, Street Fighter. It was bad. But well, I mean, I know, but Mortal it's Kombat. still showing me on Mortal Kombat. I, still like, I think the first one was great. The first Mortal Kombat was great. Second one, the second one sucked. Yeah, but don't, I, don't, I don't count that. That doesn't, that doesn't count. But, uh, and then of course Mario. Mario was good. Mm. The Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. I thought it was pretty good. Uh. But, and then, I mean, there's all this talk about, you know, Mega Man coming out and uh, Legend of Zelda coming out. That'd be good. Yeah. I like the preview. I like the trailer. Oh, that was what you and I saw. That was, that was great. I mean, not only was that hilarious, it was great. But there was one that, um, that one was funny, but there was one IGN put out, like April Fool's, like two years ago, and it looked really legit. It looked really good. Um, but it was April Fool's, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't get where this question is coming from. I mean, I guess still some people don't consider... Um, video games as an art form, which they should, and movies. I think movies do take them seriously because there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of games out there that are being de developed into movies right now. I mean, uh, I heard there's like a re there's supposed to be a Red Dead Redemption movie possibly made. There's supposed to be a Half Life movie made. There's a God of War movie that's supposed to be made. There's supposed to be a Halo. There's a lot of, a lot of studios are making, you know, games into movies because they're a very popular part of our culture. And I mean, games make a lot of money. They, I mean, I mean, I don't like it, but Call of Duty makes more money than some Hollywood blockbusters in one year. So I mean, obviously they have to take notice because games do make a lot of revenue. So, from Jeffrey Caster, so you're working for WWE, and Vince tells you, "Hey, you're no, he didn't tell you that. He didn't tell you that yet. But he says right now, bring back three former WWE superstars on a full-time basis to boost up the ratings. Who would you bring back? And Shawn bring, Michaels and bring in my coffee. Shawn Michaels." I would have to say, um, oh my gosh, I had to... He just I, said Shawn Michaels, that's all. Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, and probably I would have to go with Kurt Angle. Okay. Um, I'll pick one of those people, and it's not Shawn Michaels. Uh, it's Kurt Angle. Don't get me wrong, I love Shawn, but I, he's had his time. I think he needs to step away with his family. Um, I like Kurt Angle. I like Batista, and Batista is actually a strong member of coming back. He's been talked about where he might come back. And the third person I can see back, probably never going to happen because it was rumored on Raw 1000, and I was so disappointed that I didn't see him. But I would say, hey, Go Vince. Over. No. I'd say, hey, Vince, this guy needs to come back. He's so in tremendous shape. Bring back the lethal weapon, Steve Blackman. Amen. Raw 1000, he's supposed to be on. He was rumored on all his websites. He's in good shape still. Yeah, there was rumored on all his websites he was going to come back. And he even said on Twitter, look out for me on the, the Raw episode, and nothing happened. And I don't know what happened with that. So, yeah. So, I yeah, agree. Kurt Angle, Steve Blackman, and Batista. One of those is probably going to come back. At least probably two. All right, last two questions here before we head to break and then get into the headlines. James Bond, not any one of the people we mentioned last week, wants to know, and I'm sure everyone probably knows, so they probably can answer this themselves at all. Who killed WCW? Everybody that started falling for that, the inmates running the asylum yeah. gig. Kevin, Kevin Nash, Hulk Hogan, Hogan Eric, Eric Bischoff, Bischoff, Vince Russo. Wow. I mean, the finger poke of doom was their downfall anyway. Yeah, so, I agree completely. I mean, there's no reason to elaborate after the question. I mean, we just... We've never officially answered that question, I don't think. But, so uh, I'm sure it's pretty no knowledge. So a final question here from is from James Bond as well. Is it true there are two ultimate wars? I never heard this at oh, all. We're gonna I I wanted to I know we can't answer that. We're not ignoring it. We're ignoring, we're ignoring it. it for now. Unfortunately, we're not going to answer it this episode. Yeah. We're probably going to... I'm going to research this because I've never heard this rumor. I've heard Two Undertakers. And Yeah, I've heard Two Undertakers. They, have, they did the storyline yeah. of the Two Undertakers. Yeah. But uh, Ultimate Warrior, besides Shawn Michaels, is my second favorite mm -hmm. wrestler of all time. Mm -hmm. I like... Uh, I like where that question's going. I definitely will look into that. All right, so that's it for the questions this week. We want to thank you for all your comments, concerns, queries, and all that other stuff we mentioned. So, I'm going to pick our viewer of the week, and uh, we think we came to consensus that Jeffrey Caster... Because, only because, only because he, uh, he wrote that question that is going to require research. We'll be right back. 
Ugh, I hate these big ass prices. Sounds like you could use some big ass savings. I'd love some big ass savings. Kmart Shop Your Way members save 30 cents a gallon. 30 cents a gallon? That's a big ass discount. A big ass discount. A really big ass discount. Really big ass discount. Honey, this solves your big ass problem. Totally solves my big ass problem. Dad, look at that big ass truck. You're big ass man. Hello, big ass man. Shop Your Way members get big ass savings. Save 30 cents a gallon when you spend $50 or more at Kmart. And we're back talking about that abrupt break. We are Big B Brandon here, and Postmaster Jones is not here. This is the Dr. Gary Locker. And before the break, we're gonna we asked the viewer of the week with Jeffrey Caster. Um, but we didn't give him his montage. Right. His montage? You are this week's triple toe talk. Oh, uh, that's why we came back, that's right. Okay. But uh, we like this question about Vince telling you to run three people back. Again, thought it was close because that was a good question about the gaming thing as well in Revolution. But Jeffrey Castro, you're this week's Triple Throat Talk, episode 102, Viewer of the Week. And we're going to see it blow up on it. Nine time, nine time, nine, nine time. time. I think he's nine. Because last week he was eight. If only this, if only he's giving you a run, Bucking Five. He's giving you a run. I only meant something. I know. Oh, Anyways. All right, so. Hit my music. Since Postmaster's not here and he can't tell me hit the music, I'm not going to. I'm just going to sit here. Hit. My. Music. Well. I guess since the show won't go on without me doing it, I guess I have no choice. That's right. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got the bad case of the headline blues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Turn the Gary, get the sides. Ugh. All right. Do you feel uncomfortable? Because I do. Yeah. Well, it's just, I could throw about a million Cody Rhodes jokes out right now, and you couldn't say a thing. I could, but it wouldn't be PG. You know what, though? I don't want you to stop talking, so take us over tennis. You get the first headline this week. Yay. Um, all right. Give me that pen. There you go. Enjoy. So, tennis. Tennis, tennis, tennis. We are down to the Final Four and not basketball. We're down to the Final Four on the men's and the women's side for the semifinals. Semifinals will be played tomorrow, so by the time the show airs, the women's final will be decided and the men's final will be on Friday. So the men's and women's semis, um... There's just a surprise on each side here. Um, Sangha obviously beating Federer, not just beating him, but beating him in straight sets um, was a big surprise for me. I still thought Sangha would win because, you know, he's in France, he's the hometown hero, hometown favorite, and I think he was playing well. I think Roger Rashid is a great fit for Sangha. Roger Rashid used to coach uh, Gail Monfils and, and uh, two-time Grand Slam champion Leighton Hewitt, so obviously he knows what he's doing. I think he really can motivate Sangha here, so that's, I think, why he played so well against Federer. Federer had a big five-set battle with uh, Jill Simone in the round before, so that's a good spot for um, Sangha. Ferrer had an easy, quarter, an easy uh, quarterfinal. He had faced Tommy Robredo, who has battled for I think over 11 hours on court. He just ran out of gas. I mean, good for Tommy Robredo to make it to, to as far as he did. Guy's like 30 years old, um, veteran of the sport, so good job for him making it to the uh, quarterfinals. Um, on the other men's half, no surprise, uh, Djokovic and Nadal getting through. The Nadal had some hiccups in the beginning of the tournament, but he, he made it through. Uh, Djokovic only had one slip up. Playing Philip Kohlschreiber from uh, from Germany, only one set he lost. So uh, Joe didn't have any scares uh, there. Tommy, he played Tommy Haas this afternoon. Uh, Tommy Haas played a really good tournament, playing that long match with John Isner, winning 10-8 in the fifth, in the fifth set. But um, you know, great job by Tommy Haas, 35 years old. What a tournament he had. That was one of the better stories uh, on the men's side. Women's side, a little different. Um, Sharapova, no surprise that she got through. Um, Azarenka, no surprise that she got through. On the, on the other side, Serena Williams. That's the that's the biggest non surprise I've ever heard in my life. There's no way she was not going to. I mean, she had a she had a hiccup in her match against uh, Kuznetsova, but I, I you know how good Serena is, and she was able to pull through that one. Arani making it through. Uh, she made the finals last year, so she's trying to defend her points. I'm a little upset that she's in the in the in the semis because I like uh, Miss Agnieszka Radwanska, but. Yes, that's her name. Gazumtai. Yeah, bless you. I can pronounce her. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to see that she lost. I like her on Facebook, and I like her in general. So anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, so now we're move on to, like I said, the finals. Um, I, I don't you know, the Serena Arani match. I don't see Arani doing anything to hurt Serena Williams. That's a pretty much one of the easiest semifinals I've ever seen, women's side wise. Um, Arani can't really do anything to hurt Serena. Her serve is one of the weakest in the tournament. Uh, Serena's going to attack that serve all day long. I see this match maybe 6-1, six, 6-love. Six Something very very simple for Serena to get through. Uh, this side, it could be a toss-up. Sharapova and Azarenka. Sharapova played awful today. Just the first set, 6-love uh, love to, Yank, uh, to Yankovic. Um, Weird out. No, no. 
<laughs> now he's calling. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, right. Uh, but no. Um, Sorry. But yeah, Sharapova in the first set, she lost six love. She had 20 unforced errors and only five winners, so, but she bounced back and then, and, uh, the commentators for the, the tennis match, Mary Krill and, and Lindsay Davenport, I can't remember who was calling that match at the time, but they're they're right. She's one of the most mentally tough players out there. She can get down and come right back. That shows how good she is. Um, Azarenka's playing good, too. Uh, this is their first French Open semi. Um, it's a toss-up, but I, I think Sarah Pova wants to defend her title and get back to the final. I don't think she's going to win because I think she's going to play Serena Williams. She's going to get beat. So I'm thinking Serena win the whole thing, but I think it's a final between Serena Williams and Mar- uh, Sarah Pova on Saturday. As far as the men go... Um, the Don Djokovic is the men's is this is the first men's final. It's a blockbuster final between the two best best players on the clay. Uh, Nadal, defending champion, he was injured after Wimbledon last year. He's trying to get back to his form. He's the king of the clay. He's the greatest player in the history of this sport on the clay, no doubt about it. Djokovic says he wants to win this one. Um, he, he's missing this is Todd is missing from his trophy case. Obviously, we heard the tragic story this past week where. Um, there's a story about him on 60 Minutes where he, his first coach that he had in Serbia that was helping between the ages of 5 and 12, she passed away. Um, so obviously he's got a heavy burden there to play in her honor. You know, I like Djokovic. He's a very good player, very animated on court, but I, I think Nadal's playing too good, and this is his, this is his turf, pretty much. Even though it's not turf, it's clay. But this is his turf. Uh, I think he's won, but I think it's going to go five sets. I think Nadal and Djokovic are going to have a classic battle on, on uh, Friday. As far as the other, as far as the other um, semifinal between Nassang and Ferrer, I can draw this similar to the semifinal in Wimbledon where Murray played Sanga um, in terms of Murray was the hometown favorite, Sanga would be the hometown favorite, and, and Murray's playing a guy that he's better than Sanga. I think Sanga, even though Sanga has a 1-2 and two record against Ferrer, I think Sanga's a much better player than Ferrer. He moves better, he's got a lot more power, his serve is better, even though Ferrer can get to any ball on the court, because he's, he's, he's a, he's a, he's, they call him the Little Beast. It's not a joke, it's really his nickname, the Little Beast. So, But I think Sanga can win this match, I think he's playing well. He hasn't dropped a set yet, neither is first, so someone's obviously going to drop a set in this match on Friday. But I like Sanga to win that match, I think in four sets. I think Ferrer can get a set off of him, but I think Sanga pulls through. And they have a French Open finalist in the, for the first time in, I think, 29 years. Um, Yannick Noah, as I said last week, won the French Open 30 years ago. I think there was a finalist in 84. Um, as far as the men go, that'll be a blow. It was like the same thing with the Wimbledon final. I think it drew so much rating because it was the king of that court, the master of the grass, Roger Federer, the greatest of all time, uh, versus the hometown favorite, Andy Murray. This is the same situation. I think it'd be good for the sport. Rafael Nadal, the king of clay, the greatest on that surface, versus the hometown favorite, Saga. And... As much as I'd like to see Song win because you'd like to root for the guy to win the title, I just don't see I think the doll is too good on that surface. Uh, it'll be the same situation with the, the, the better person on that surface will win, I think. But I think Song is going to take him to him. I think that goes five sets. I think the doll gets pushed because the power of Song is going to be really good that day. But I, I think the doll makes it out the uh, eight time French Open champion. So definitely tune in next week to see if I was right or not. And then we move on to Wimbledon next um, after that. So it should be good. I'm. Um, the thing I was surprised about, I was surprised, like you said, that uh, <clears throat> that what, the guy that song is playing. I'm so I'm surprised that he got in. I can't pronounce his name. Federer? No. Ferrer. Ferrer. Thank so, you. Really? Yeah. I was surprised that he made it in. Um, I wanted to talk with you for a split second, though, about the turf that they're. The you clay? say yeah, the clay. Yeah. That you know. The terra bat too, as they call it. That he's greatest of all time on the clay. Right, yeah. I have to liken that to Seattle and to Washington, okay. okay? Like, playing on the surface that they play on, and they still lose on their surface. Of course. And no one's perfect, except he's only lost once. But. And I think that with the hometown support, I think more often than not, when you have a home crowd, I think that that kind of helps you. Yeah. With Murray last year at Wimbledon, it boosted him up enough to get to the finals at Wimbledon. Of course, he fell short, mm-hmm. but then won on the court in Wimbledon when it really mattered. He, of course, he beat better bad. Yeah. So, so um, when you step up for your country and for your crowd, yeah. uh, and there's no greater example than that than at the Olympics. Right. Um, I, I would take an Olympic Med- gold medal any day right. over a Wimbledon title right. any day of the yeah. week. Uh, do you think that that holds true at all? Because you, when you're talking about tennis, you're talking, of course, one person, yeah. unless it's doubles right. and it's two, versus a whole football team, mm-hmm. you know, or or a basketball team, and some have uh, ice rinks underneath them right. because of uh, because of NHL. Oh, right. uh, what do you make of that? I mean, is it possible? Can Songa rise up with this with the help of the home crowd and draw from that and? 
And would it be an upset, do you think? I mean, obviously it wouldn't be an upset because even though Nadal, he, he came back from injury, he's been out for a long time, mm-hmm. he, he came back from injury, he's playing really well. His, you know, even though he lost a couple of sets, I mean, his draw wasn't necessarily that difficult. I mean, he played Daniel Brands, a big, tall guy. Um, he, he won the first set off, off him. Um, and then he played Cleason, lost the first set to him. And he started against format, he played Fanini. Fanini's pretty good, and he gave, Fanini gave him some trouble. And then he played Kenny Shikori. Kenny Shikori got blown off the court. Um, and then he played Stan Wawrinka today. And Wawrinka has never beaten Nadal, and then he got a set off him. So Nadal's draw was pretty easy for him, I think. I think he really wanted to challenge him, to be honest with you. But I think, though, it would be interesting to see if um, Fanini lost his match because he was playing Lucas Rassol, who beat him at Wimbledon last year. That would have been interesting to see if, if Rassol would beat him again on the clay or was it just a fluke because of the grass and how the big servers on the grass are really um, more prevalent. You know, there was, a, there was a match of the day between Varenka and Gasquet, who was from France as well, and they were really per- he, He's been touted since he was like five years old, Gasquet. Um, he puts a lot of flair, which the French players like, a lot of flair, a lot of style. And he hasn't he hasn't gotten there yet. He hasn't gotten to a grand slam. He won some time, but not any grand slams. He hasn't. Got, I don't think he's even been to a final. He's been semifinal. He's been to semifinal Wimbledon. I think he was in semifinal of Australian Open. I think, but he's been in semifinals of a couple of them. Um, I, you know, I think they would root it for him more because he's been around a long time. I guess if he got through, obviously if he got through, he'd have played Nadal. So that's that's a moot point at this at, right now. But back to Gasquet. He's got a lot of power. He's been to a grand slam final before. He um, he went to, he went to the 2008 Australian Open final against Djokovic and lost that. He was still very young, but I think he's more fit this time around. He lost a lot of weight. He's, he's got a, he's got um, a lot of cardio. He did a lot of cardio work with Rashid. I think that um, I think that um, with Sanga, obviously the crowd's gonna be in his favor. Obviously, I mean I mean 30 years ago when Yanni Noah played Matt Lander, one of the greatest of all time, Matt Lander, you figure it would be a five set match. Wasn't the case. Yannick Noah beat him in three sets, straight sets. So, if Sanga either wins, if he wins in five, I won't be surprised. I mean, I'll still be surprised because this is this is a big, huge test for Sanga to play in his first French Open final against the greatest of all time on the clay. You know, I hope the crowd can rise up because it'll be exciting to watch. But against Nadal, Nadal, this is this is the, the craziest thing I, I've heard about Nadal's record at, at Roland Garros. He has lost one match and he's won seven French Open titles. That is ridiculous. He's won every single match he's played there except one and he lost to Robin Soderling in 2009. Subsequently, that's when Federer won his only French Open title. So I don't think Federer would win the French Open if he had to run against Nadal. But, you know, I, I like Sami. He's a very, very good player, very flashy. He's very, very good on the court, but I just think Nadal's too much at this tournament. I mean, he's only lost once. That is ridiculous. One time in that many years, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you know, obviously the French crowd, they're very passionate about the sport, but I just think Nadal's he's too, much. too much. Well, good coverage there. Thank you very much. So I was looking at my phone. We've got some breaking news coming in. I'm trying to confirm it, and we'll share it with you on wrestling because it is wrestling-related. It's uh, very big news, actually, and not in a good sense. Hopefully we can so, get uh, I'm trying to get confirmation of that. Uh, anyways, moving on. The NHL playoffs going from the clay to the ice here. Uh, Chicago leads the Kings 2-1. to one, And Boston leads the Penguins 2-0 to zero in the series I think, going to 7. I think my prediction still is true. Um, I said way back when we picked who we think win the Stanley Cup. I still think the Blackhawks are the best team. I think that streak they were on wasn't a fluke. I think they're... They're really good, and um, they look very good right now. And in the Women's College World Series action, the Boomer Sooners, Oklahoma Sooners, Boomer Sooners. <laughs> as JR would say, he would say, they sweep the Lady Vols for the Women's College World Series Championship. Sweep. So congratulations to Oklahoma, for sure, Sweet. for sure. They can get it done in college baseball, and they can get it done in football, too. So. And it is a little early for a break, but we're going to go to the break because our next three stories are the headlines for the day. And when we come back, we'll continue here on Triple Threat Talk. Stay tuned. me to be here. No one expected me to be a starter, to hit game-winning shots, or even play in this league. Well, I'm not here to live up to anyone else's expectations. I'm here to live up to mine.
and welcome back to Triple Threat Talk. I'm Gary, the Dr. Locker, next to Big B, Brandon, Demira. The spot's missing. The spot is missing right there. Going to cover some NASCAR action, uh, of course. You uh, cover NASCAR? I know, right? Trey can do it. Tread carefully, my friend. Tread carefully. Tony Stewart gets the win this past week. Uh, some very interesting news. Jimmy Johnson. Not Jimmy, but Jimmy Johnson. Was disqualified for jumping the la- jumping the pace car. So yeah, you can't do that. He puts the he put his pedal to the metal a little sooner than what he was going to be expected. He actually finished the race. Mm-hmm. He was disqualified the next day, and so if he would have won, he wouldn't have won anyway. Right. Because the next day it would have gone. I would think to uh, to smoke. Yeah. So Jimmy's boy pulls through in the clutch and takes it on the NASCAR, and of course. Um, I'm not sure if there's an investigation pending. I think they just disqualified him, but I would imagine uh, someone being disqualified from a race would be an investigation. We'll talk a little bit more to Postmaster about that. He, I usually let him cover NASCAR. You see, you see this is why we can't do the show one person. Because, know, right? because if, if it were just, for example, just me, I could cover you know tennis or whatever, but I'd be like NASCAR, I'd be fumbling. And if it was just him, he couldn't cover tennis like I just did or NASCAR. And if Jimmy was there, it's, it's, we need all of us here. So. So he's, he's checking on that story, actually, for OVW. Yeah, uh, yeah. Story. we just got confirmation of that. I'll go ahead and break the news here so we don't look like idiots on the air. A little bit of wrestling coverage before wrestling. Doug Williams and Alex Silva are is being released are being released from both OVW and TNA. Does not say for, for whatever reason. Right. Um, apparently, Alex Silva does have the option... Possibly, possibly to return without a TNA deal because he is from OBW. Mm-hmm. Of course, Doug Williams was on loan from TNA, right. so that is not an option for him. Yeah. So, some big news coming yeah. out of OBW. We'll cover that more when we get we'll, to OBW. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more a little bit later on today, so sorry about that. So, moving on to the NBA playoffs. Miami beat the Pacers in seven and move on to play the Spurs. Well, there's only so much up other than LeBron James. Right. All right, but this has not been the talk of the week. All right. The talk of the week sh- is: Should Miami consider using the amnesty on Dwayne Wade? All right. So basically, with the new collective bargaining agreement for the NBA, every team is allowed one amnesty, in which it does not affect your your bottom line. It does not affect your your salary cap. It doesn't affect anything. All right. You can amnesty that player to another team. You still pay that player. But his money no longer goes against your salary cap. So it's kind of like moving column A, or an item from column A, into an item for column B, but the price of the item in column B is still the same as it is in column A. It just does not increase your bottom line. Mm-hmm. So people are saying, should they amnesty Dwayne Wade? I think you got to look somewhere else other than that. I'll run the stats by for you just in case. For his career, he averages rebounds per game 5.1, assists per game 6.1, and points per game a whopping 24.7. Not bad. Of course, he was with the Miami Heat before LeBron got there, so even though LeBron is still there, Dwayne Wade is considered by many to be the face of the Miami Heat. He won a ring with Shaq. Yeah, so um, his playoff production is low this year based on based on the numbers that I just read off. Playoffs this year, 4.9 rebounds a game, 4.9 assists per game, and 14.1 points per game. So his numbers are a little bit lower. But I did a little bit more digging, as the doctor usually does. He does dig. (laughs) Because Dwayne Wade, to me, would upset the the, the people in Miami too much, all right? Yes, you paid him. And yet, no, you don't owe him. They have paid him for sure. You you don't owe him an explanation or any any kind of whatsoever if you were to amnesty this man. You would have to answer to the fans though, because he is more he is arguably more well loved than LeBron James in the city of Miami. Well, yeah, I think that's true. I, I think um, you know, you look at it from a perspective where LeBron came to him mm-hmm. to get a ring. LeBron couldn't get it done with, with the, the pack of people he had in Cleveland, so he right. had to come to Miami and get they say, hey, Dwayne, let's let's come together here. Let's win this thing. So right. That's what happened. And, of course, it did take them a while to mesh. Right, yeah. But I think you have to look at the third member of the big three if you're going to end these. Bosh. Chris Bosh. Over his career, 8.9 rebounds a game, 2.1 assists per game, and 19.5 points per game. 
over the career versus in playoffs. 6.6 rebounds a game, so there's a reduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1.2 assists per game, there's a reduction. And 12.3 points per game, there's a reduction. Of course, Dwayne Wade reduced a lot, reduced a lot too. Yeah. But when you're talking about already miserable numbers for assists per game, mm-hmm. and every just dropping across the board for Chris Bosh. I gotta, I gotta say, I would amnesty Chris Bosh. He's still young enough where you can get somebody good for him. Because if you don't, if you don't amnesty somebody, here's what's gonna happen. I have to eat, I have to eat a little bit of crow for what I said last year. No one could have, no one though could have, could have made the call that they would all three take a pay cut. Yeah. What I had said last year is that these three will not be on the same team again. I was wrong. I don't say that very often. I'm not even sure if I know what the word wrong means. Yeah, if you said like. You know, he, the first time he tried to say I was wrong, he burst into flames. Right. I mean, it's it's insane. It just doesn't happen often. And that's not me being arrogant. That's true. But when you look at it, when you look at what happened, no one no one expects someone to say, "Hey, uh, Chris, how you doing today, buddy?" <laughs> Sounds like a Dateline NBC um, conversation. <laughs> how you doing? Take a seat right hey, over take here. Take a seat. Actually, I was going to say that. Take, 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 take a seat right there next to Dwayne and LeBron. <laughs> what, what are you doing? I'm Chris here? Hansen from Dateline NBC. Uh, I'm the other Chris. <laughs> hey, uh, guys, you all played great last year. Good job on the win. Good job bringing the, bringing the championship back to, the, back to Miami. We're going to have to let one of you go, though, because we can't afford all three of you. And then somebody in that meeting... Uh, says the following. I don't know who proposed it. Mystery person A. Mystery person A says, it's all right, we'll all take a pay cut so we can all play again together. Eh. What? Eh. Nobody saw that coming. They all took a pay pay cut to play together again this year. Nobody sees that coming. I sure as heck didn't. Uh, It's insane on the face of it because generally... When you win a world championship, right. your salary goes up and not down. Yeah. So I, I think uh, back to what you said about sitting all three down. I guess it should be something like American Idol. Dim the lights, here we go. <laughs> goes, so Ron James, you are safe. You are safe. Chris Bosh, you sit are, over there next to Eric Spolstra. Chris Bosh, you are going home tonight. Oh. But I think you have to look at Chris Bosh. If you if you're gonna amnesty anybody, I think you have to. I think you have to look towards Chris Bosh. You've still got some years there. He gives any other team would be lucky he'd be him. he'd be lucky to have him, uh, especially somebody like L.A. Because if not, what you're going to have you're going to have a period of success, but then you're going to end up like Chicago, who kept the same players for too long. They need Derrick Rose to and, anyway. Yeah, and what happens with Chicago is they're just now what they had 15 years of being irrelevant. Like the last two, three years, they've just yeah. Been I mean, you know, if you don't know the history of Chicago Bulls, they have six NBA championships. That's all with the Jordan, mm-hmm. Pippen, Rodman, Kerr, all those people who got those the champions for the team. And they, and so. like I said, they kept them way too long. Yeah. Um, Even the greats such as Michael Jordan, they kept him way too long. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, at least someone, at least they showed up in the last game of the of the series because the last couple of few games before Game Seven, they weren't. Showing up with just LeBron James by himself, um, but uh, you know, I mean, Kuzma getting back to the finals. I think they're still the favorites to win. Um, the Spurs have been on like ten days rest, so um, it's a lot of time off. And you know, Tony Parker's not getting any younger, and Tim Duncan's not getting any younger. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. I'll starts, probably be watching a couple games. Starts uh, tomorrow, nine o'clock on ABC, I believe, versus TNT. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's I think it's it's one of those channels, ABC or TNT. Anyways, getting on to the big story of the day. Major League Baseball is preparing to suspend 20 players that would include A-Rod, Melky Cabrera, and others in association with Biogenesis, a clinic out of Miami ran by Tony Bosch, another Bosch in Miami. Mm. Not spelled, uh, not spelled, not the, spelled same. the same way. And Bosch is ready to name names. He says, I'm ready, guys. I, I want to do this. Put me, cool. in coach. Put I'm me ready. in, coach. I'm ready to name the normal suspension is 50, ga- 50 games for performance-enhancing drugs. For suspension, yeah. But because some of these players have been suspected and tested before, and including Ryan Braun and Alex Rodriguez, mm-hmm. they are now liable for 100-game suspensions if allegations are proven true. true. Right. So, uh, here's something else. With the exception of Braun, and this is, Colin talked about this today. And he has a point 
It's a very uncomfortable subject, but it's true. When you look at the list of names on these 20 names, and you look at their last names, they're all of Hispanic origin, Dominican. Except for Ryan Braun. Except for Brian Braun, of course. They're all Hispanic and Dominican. You know, you look at, and this is paraphrasing exactly what Cal- Colin said, because I couldn't have said it any better. He's referring to Colin Coward. Yeah, right Colin Coward. Um, he had a very good point. He said it's worth it to them to cheat because you come from the Dominican. It's the other side of the island from Cuba, or from Haiti. I mean, you got Haiti and the DR. You have these lavish ball fields in Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic. But the neighborhoods, not they're, they're rubble. So it's worth it to cheat to them. It's worth it. And maybe that's why they're doing it. I don't know if that's why they're doing it. And he also brought up another good point. He said, why even have a suspense? Why even have why even have repercussions? Because look at it this way. If you're gonna just slap him on the wrist with fifty games, you know, for example, A Rod. A Rod's probably thinking, man, I'm in a contract year, I could use the break. He hasn't played at all this year. Yeah, I mean... He's getting paid for it. I, I, could, I could use the brain, or anybody could say, anybody really, could say, hey, it's only 50 game suspension, 160, 162 games. Uh, it's a 50 game suspension. You know, I could use the break. I'm in a contract year anyways. What do I have to lose? I'm going to get my money because in baseball, it's guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things the Yankees are kicking themselves about right now because of these allegations against A-Rod. They are going to try to finagle their way out of this contract. And I, I, didn't, I didn't even have to I didn't have to listen to sports to know, the sports cast to know that if they try to do that, the players union is going to come in and say, not so fast. Mm-hmm. And I typically unions are there like with Kroger, you know, we have a union. Like with Ford. They damn, have a union. Damn those unions. I don't know, right? Usually the union people are there for to help people that can't defend themselves, right. all right, or that, that need them. With these players' unions here, these people are well off. They don't need the defense. So that's that's kind of bothersome that a player union is going to come in on hands of someone who I guarantee you is almost a billionaire, and Alex Rodriguez. It's very close. And they're going to say, you can't deprive this poor man of his money. Are you kidding me? He's a billionaire, and he cheated. You know what? I'll say this much, you know, not to change the subject no, a, little, a, little, a little bit. Um, if it ever comes out that Miguel Cabrera took anything, my God, he'd be one of the most hated players in the history of baseball, all the stuff he's done. Triple crown winner, he's playing phenomenal this year, he's one of the best hitters in all of baseball. And if he ever comes out he did anything, boy, oh boy, he's going to get... I'll tell you he's going to get the, the, the works for sure. i tell you who's also on the hook for quite a bit of heat is Ryan Braun because of the interview he did last year mm-hmm. saying, I swear on my life that substance never uh, entered my you body. Know, you know, and I want to believe him. It's, you know, it's a shame the times we live in in terms of baseball because this is – and the thing is it's, it's not fair to someone like – Mike Piazza, I know I'm saying, I know I'm a mess here, but I'm just trying to make a point. It's not so much fair to Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza is probably the greatest hitting catcher of all time. One of the greatest hitting catchers, if not the best. And he doesn't get in the Hall of Fame because he was in the steroid era. Did it ever come out that he did steroids? No. Was it ever a proven fact? No. Could he think it? Sure, you can think it because of his build, and that's fine. But it was ever proven that he did it? Of course not. So to not have put him in the Hall of Fame because of allegations of other people is stupid. But and it's the time we live in. And I agree. I think that I think when it comes down to the steroid era, I think with this past ballot, everybody just wanted to rub it in and say, see how disgusted they were with this whole mess. That's how we live in. And I think that's fine for them. One year, no one cast a ballot. I think that should have been done. But I think eventually you'll have people like Piazza and Hall of Fame. Piazza Hall of Fame, but. Bonds, uh, Bond, Sosa, McGuire. I can go. You know, it's, it's the best hitters, and that's you know. And they they shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Well, I don't think they'll ever get it. Bonds yeah. might eventually. I, I hope not. I don't know. But you know, it, it's one of those things. Uh, it, it it's going to be a story that's going to be running probably most of the summer, especially since baseball season is in full swing. The two best records in baseball are coming out of the NL Central with the Cardinals and the Reds. I know Brian Cannon is happy about that one. Right. So when we come back, we'll head into wrestling right after the break. Hey, Nick Dinsmore here. Do you 
you have the dream of becoming a pro wrestler? Well, I did, and I came to Ohio Valley Wrestling. Join the Nick Dinsmore Pro Wrestling class today. I'm a former WWE superstar, I'm a former nine-time Ohio Valley Wrestling heavyweight champion, and I can train you to be the best today. For all the information regarding the Nick Dinsmore Pro Wrestling class, go to ovwrestling.com and click on School. Join the Nick Dinsmore Pro Wrestling class today. ovwrestling.com, click on School. And welcome back to Triple Threat Talk. I am Gary the Dr. Locker. This is Big B, Brandon Muro. Our clocks are out of sync. <laughs> Again. Again. It's happened twice today. But anyways, I think uh, with baseball season in full swing, uh, these repercussions are going to move a little bit faster because I guarantee you the Yankees are going to want to try to get out of this contract as soon as possible. Awesome. And it's just not going to happen. It doesn't they matter. They owe them too much money. It doesn't matter how much they squirm. It's not going to happen. They owe A. Rod too much money. He should have never been signed for that much money with his age and with his medical uh, with, with his medical history. His playoff record. His playoff record it's uh, for one year. Yeah. And it's just you know, like I know I've said it before on the show. I'll say it again. One of the greatest jokes of all time was Seth Meyers at Saturday Night Live saying. If he got that girl pregnant, it would be the only time he's ever produced in October. <laughs> so, I think it's great. Good luck to Seth Myers on that, though, for sure. But anyways, so that wraps up Headlines. It does. Yeah. It does. You so, look excited. So, Headlines is finished, and now we head into OVW. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go to Brian Cannon for his official um, uh, recap of OVW this week, we'll talk about the story we broke earlier. So... According to Stop TNA it. and OVW or whoever mm -hmm. you got the source from, Brian Cannon and my and Michael Rickard. Brian Cannon and Michael right. Rickard said that they released them both from OVW. Doug Williams and Alex Silva from both from both. So, they are they are being released um, from both. Of course, Alex Silva, homegrown since he's homegrown OVW, I imagine he he, he would have the opportunity yeah, to come yeah. back. Um, you know, and obviously I'll double check the story just to make sure it's not, you know, I mean, I'll check all the websites just to make sure this is a legit thing, just to make sure. It uh, is legit. Well, I mean, I'll just, <laughs> I want to make sure. Um, so, uh, I mean, obviously William's not going to come back because he was a product of TNA, so obviously mm -hmm. he's gone. Silva, I, I don't think he'll come back either just because of what OVW has become. OVW is now a training ground for TNA, and they're, and TNA people are there every week, and whether you see them or not, they're there every week, and they're watching and studying and, and looking at who they can put in and who they can bring up and who, whatever. So I, I don't think it would be in someone's best interest to go back because if they release him and he goes back, and then, and bear in mind, they're the first person he, they looked at. He was the first person to go to gut check and win. So, I mean, I don't think Silva should go back. I think Silva should go to, to try what Marcus Anthony did, go back to, go to WWE and try out FCW. I mean, he's, I mean, it might not work for me because he kind of has a Randy Orton kind of thing going, so I don't know if that would work out or not. But I mean, he's a very good talent. He's got he's got some charisma for sure. So. But uh, with that being said, Mr. Brian Cannon, take it away. We the people, hey everybody, Brian Cannon of OVW Mania here again on Triple Threat Talk. Now, last week the guys had to bring up the fact that Zeb Coulter called my team the Caribbean Cardinals at Extreme Rules. So I just wanted to say something real quick. Okay, I'm still a fan of Zeb Coulter. I'm still a fan of Jack Swagger. I'm still a fan of the whole We the People thing. And uh, you guys can be jealous because as of filming this episode, the St. Louis Cardinals have the best record in all of baseball at 36 and 18. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So uh, we're, we're going to move on to OVW episode 719. It was filmed Wednesday, May 29th. Came out online on... Uh, ovwrestling.com and blib.tv Thursday, May 30th, and aired actually earlier today, Saturday, June 1st, on WBNA Ion 21. I'm actually filming this between uh, it airing earlier today and the Saturday night special. Uh, I'm doing that for a couple reasons. First of all, I will talk about the Saturday night special and next week's TV on next week's episode here on Triple Threat Talk. And then I'll also give anybody time who wants to see the show, whether they buy the DVD online or uh, at an OVW Wrestling live event to be able to view it before uh, I talk about it. I will go over the card at the end, however, uh, and of course some of the stuff in the episode I'm going to talk about will lead up to that. So uh, that's part of uh, what we're going to do here. Uh, of course, by the time this airs on Triple Threat Talk, you will see the results, or you can see the results anyway, 
on my website, ovwmania.blogspot.com. Uh, one other quick note, OVW Mania is also joining Triple Threat Talk on the Fan Advocates website, ovwrestlingfanadvocate.com. Um, I'm going to have some OVW stuff there. I can even blog about the St. Louis, not the Caribbean Cardinals if I feel like it. Uh, anything else sports related. Right now there's n not anything up there on the page other than my logo and my Twitter link. Um, but as soon as I figure out how everything works on that website uh, and start getting going, uh, you can find uh, some OVW Mania stuff there as well. So, as we move on to last week's OVW episode, we'll start off with a couple of the dark match results. Uh, Lady Tapa once again destroyed uh, in, in her matchup. Uh, she beat the lovely Lila. Uh, basically toyed with her the whole match, got the win. Uh, Rob Terry, who's been strictly in a lot of dark matches recently, beat another big man for him, Mr. Marvelous Melvin Maximus. Uh, he continues to dominate. Uh, as the uh, main episode came on, Marcus Anthony was in the lead match. After beating Ted McNaylor badly last week where he had to be stretchered out, he beat his tag team partner of the Mobile Homers, Adam Revolver, this week. Uh, backstage, we see Taylor Hendricks uh, approached by Nikki St. John about uh, her relationship with Heidi Lovelace, and uh, it looks like Taylor's basically using Heidi uh, for her own good to possibly get closer to the title herself. Um, she actually tells Heidi, who approaches her later in the segment, that uh, Trina's been, been saying bad things about her behind her back, about uh, both Heidi and Taylor to get uh, Heidi all upset. We also see uh, Jay Bradley uh, all upset with uh, Jesse Goddard about stealing his title shot. And uh, Jesse says uh, it wasn't being stolen. He was uh, Mr. Opportunity, Mr. Spectacular. Uh, Jamin walks in and says it doesn't matter who he faces for the title. He can beat both of them, and that sets up a three-way match for later in the night. And then uh, we also see Tony Gunn and Randy Royal talking in the back again. Randy Royal says he's now spent money on a Bowflex for them. To, uh, so that way they don't have to go to the gym all the time. They can train with the new Bowflex. Uh, something else that I thought was interesting, uh, which actually aired on the main show, The Assassin uh, came out and took out Cody Castle, who was cleaning off the ropes. Uh, the Assassin has been taking out people for the better part of the last year, year and a half. And uh, this was finally actually aired on OVW TV, so maybe uh, we'll see more of The Assassin on OVW television. In a rematch from the prior SNS, uh, Trina once again successfully defended her OVW women's title against Epiphany. As she went back through the curtain, we see backstage that uh, Heidi approaches her, uh, gets mad about her talking about her behind her back, and challenger, challenges her for the women's title at SNS, which uh, Trina accepts, says, you know, once again, she's a fighting champion, and she has no idea what Heidi's talking about, but she's, she'll, she's willing to defend the women's title. Uh, then we have an in-ring interview set up by Michael Titus with the team of Michael Hayes and Muhammad Ali Vaez. Michael's questioned as to why exactly he picked Ali to be his tag team partner. And he goes through a couple reasons, including Ali's a former eight-time TV champion. Um, he kicked his butt many times, showed him how to be a pro wrestler. And uh, also talks about how Ali stepped up last year for OVW when Josie tried to make him lose uh, a chance at the OVW TV title as well as trying to take power that uh, he stepped up and uh, was able to save OVW last year. And then Ali talks about how um, his parents came to the U.S. 38 years ago with the dream for a better life. He talks about how when he was 18, he joined the Army and spent four years at a very prestigious uh, academy, uh, West Point. And then he talks about how wrong the coalition's been. And at this point, uh, Gilly Man, Joe Coleman, and Delta Team Bravo all come out from underneath the ring. Uh, and attack Hayes and Ali from behind. However, Hayes and Ali get the upper hand back and actually chase them out the side door. Uh, next up, Paradise was uh, challenging for the OVW television title against Randy Royal. Uh, he was going for a Bronco Buster on Royal, and Royal put his leg up. Was it an accident? Was it on purpose? But uh, he accidentally kicked and low-blowed uh, Paradise and then rolled him up for the win. Um, it, it, what, we, we don't know if it was a any means necessary thing or self-defense, but uh, Rockstar Spud seems to think that he's purposely doing it. He came out and said that once again he will be challenging 
Randy Royal at Saturday Night Special for the TV title. And he said, I'm not demanding, but I'm instructing you, Tony Gunn, to stay out of my way and stay out of the match. The main event, Jesse Godders, who became the new number one contender, actually got a clean pinfall victory over the champion, Jamin Olivencia, beating him and Jay Bradley in a triple threat match. And then as that match was coming to a close, Hayes and Ali was dragging the coalition back out to the ring, uh, and they were yelling for um, Crimson and Jason Wayne to come out. Crimson and Jason Wayne emerge from under the ring with gas masks that kind of look like this. Um, they attack um, Hayes and Ali from behind, end up handcuffing them, tying them up, and uh, beating them down with a baton and a steel chair, and uh, getting the upper hand going into the Saturday Night Special. So um, we've got another SNS coming up pretty quick. Uh, mainly because last month was delayed a week by the Kentucky Derby, which is pretty big around this area. So uh, in just a moment, I will be going over the uh, SNS card. All right, so for SNS, this is what you can expect for the show on June 1st, 2013. The big match we were just talking about moments ago, the Coalition's Generals, the Red Baron of Ruthless Reconnaissance Crimson, teams up with the Diabolical Dictator of Domestic Defense, Jason Wayne, to take on the real American heroes, the team of Michael Hayes and Muhammad Ali Vaez. Jesse Goddard's Mr. Pectacular, Mr. Opportunity, Challenges Jamin Olivencia for the OVW Heavyweight Championship. Randy Royal defends his television title once again against Rockstar Spud, who has warned Tony Gunn to stay out of the match and stay out of his way. And we know Trina will be defending the Women's Championship against Heidi Lovelace. Those are the four big confirmed matches for SNS, and plus there will be much, much more, I know. Uh, as I said, you can check the results. Um, by the time this airs, they'll be up on ovwmania.blogspot.com. I want to thank you all for tuning in once again. And uh, Triple Threat, guys, I know that you all have not been to any shows recently, but hopefully you all have been keeping up. I'd love to hear some of your comments and opinions on what's been happening lately. Until next time, this is Brian Cannon. All right, good stuff from Brian, as always. Definitely always check out his blog at ovmania.blogspot.com. For sure. Two dots in there, two dots. OV, I know. That's OV Mania. You got it right. You got it right. I was just saying there's two dots in there. That's oh, cool. Okay. I thought you were correcting me. No. Okay, anyway, so now I move to. He's correcting again. Jeez, Luis. All right. Gosh, Brian, give us a break. So moving to WWE. <laughs> moving to WWE. So guys. now I'm moving to WWE. Um, you know, roll this past week. I don't know what it was. It just didn't seem very exciting to me. Um, no, Dolph Ziggler. Even though he was at the house show on Saturday, but they're still protecting him. And he think he's going to be at payback defending his title against um, Del Rio, so he'll be all right. Um, the McMahons were back. Vince and Stephanie showed up to protect Triple H. and um, it's always good to see Stephanie. And Stephanie McMahon called Triple H by the name. They called him Paul. Mm -hmm. And people were like, who is Paul, probably? Who is this Paul they're talking about? Hopefully everyone knows who that is. But, um... It was good to see Vince and Stephanie back, and Vince is growing his hair back again. He's gotten the attitude era haircut going. So um, it doesn't take a lot to go out and get a toupee. <laughs> um, uh, let's see what else happened. Um, Curtis actually gets another one over John Cena, but it's another count. And the thing that perplexed me, and we we're talking about it on Facebook, me and Postmaster. If this this was made a no disqualification match, which means there's no rules, no count out, no count outs is what I'm making prevalent here. If this is a no disqualification match and there are no rules, pray tell why when John Cena and Curtis Axel were outside the ring was the referee counting. Please explain. It doesn't say it was no count, it just says no DQ. No DQ means no count. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Not all the time. Ninety time it usually does. Hmm. But they I've seen plenty of no but DQ matches. Again, count outs. I don't know why they're having Curtis Axel win by let him win, let him beat somebody. I mean, I know it's John Cena, but for crying out loud, the guy needs to win. Um so 
They signed the contract for the match between Jericho and Punk. Punk was not there again. I think Punk's not going to come back until uh, till payback. So, um, and then it looks like they're also building that feud we talked about last week uh, for the Intercontinental title, Wade Barrett, Miz, and Fondango. Yeah, probably going to set up for a triple threat match and yeah. payback. Yeah, and I think Fandango will get the belt because I think Steve Austin's in their ear going, what, 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 Fandango? Okay. Um, so that pretty much does it for, for Raw, I would think. Um, nothing else I can think of to mention. Um, uh, they had a contract signing that didn't end in violence for once. Yeah, that's, that's true. Shock. That's true. So, uh, but other than that, yeah, I don't think anything else prevalent really happened. Uh, oh, Daniel Bryan pulled double duty. Oh, yeah, D- Daniel Bryan. And he is getting great reaction. Daniel Bryan like, pulled double duty. He was in the tag match with Kane and Randy Orton versus The Shield. Mm-hmm. And then he fought uh, Roman Reigns by himself. Um, someone, and I'm sure people know who this is, um, NoDQ.com owner, plus the person did NoDQ save for quite some time, Aaron Rift. He posted a stats on his Facebook page that I completely agree with. He said, um, I believe he said something along the lines of, Daniel Bryan's, you know, he's really getting over with the crowd now, and I think um, he should win the money in the bank again and cash it on John Cena, win clean, and have Cena go on vacation, which I think is a great idea. I think, I think this is, I think it's happened finally where... Daniel Bryan is getting appreciated and really recognized for what he did over in ROH and, and, and when he wrestled over, over, you know, over in Japan. He's really getting recognized for how talented he is now. I mean, everyone knew it, but no one's really seen it yet, I think, in WWE in a long time. But I think now it's really coming to fruition that Daniel Bryan is, is, is probably up there with the best wrestlers in the company, and that's, I think that's why WWE's better than Tina, just, you know, just to throw it out there. Because I think, I think people like Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk are just... Some of the best people in Jericho, some of the best people in the, in the world, not just WWE, but wrestling ones, period. So Dolph Ziggler, def- uh, not Dolph Ziggler, uh, Daniel Bryan definitely deserves uh, to really get recognized. And I think he, I think they're going to break him away from King a little bit, you know, in a little bit. And all that tag team is great. Um, I think Daniel Bryan gets a, uh, gets a single split yet again because he's really doing a great job. So. Yeah, I, and I couldn't agree more. I think that Dolph Ziggler... I think that this whole rubber match thing last night that Del Rio came out and won over a Big E Langston, Big, Big, um, who does look pretty good in the ring. I do yeah, have to say Big that. Yeah, Big E Langston's good. Uh, I know, think they're on to something good. His, his mic skills need work, but that's you know that's work of uh, creative. So yeah. he can work on that too. But anyways, I think that wraps up wrestling it, coverage. It do. I think next week we have our picks for payback. I have to check on the yeah. date, but I think it's next week. It should be good. Um, we'll see what happens. First pay per view they've done of this kind of new pay per view called Payback, so we'll see what happens. So now we move on to our favorite segments of the week Wild Card and Idiot of the Week. Do you, Do you have, have an Idiot of the Week? Because I don't. I have a small idea. Okay, okay, go ahead. Well, he's an idiot for saying what he said, but he's smart for doing what he did. So I'll explain. I can't remember the name. This is obviously a very vague Idiot of the Week, but it's an Idiot, <laughs> it's an idiot, of, it's an idiot of the Week nonetheless. The Something f- was said. The, no. former, the former president of Ohio State University. Uh, oh yeah, I said certain this. things about the University of Louisville and the SEC and, and Notre, no, Notre Dame was the worst. I thought was worse. He said you can't trust those Catholics, mm-hmm. um, and they said something about Louisville and the SEC about something like that. It was when they learned how to read or something like that. He said very negative things, and as the president of the organization, he resigned. Well, let's all face it; he's probably forced to resign by somebody above him. So, um, <laughs> whatever it is, the, the former president of the Ohio, the Ohio State University, or this week's triple threat talk. Small idiot, idiot of, of the week. week. But an idiot nonetheless. Go ahead with your wild card. You have a wild card. Uh, yes, I do. Um, we discussed this week mm-hmm. that coming, starting probably next week, more than likely next week, starting, starting next week, it will be the first annual Triple Threat Talk Pentathlon. What is that? We, we, we said we came to the conclusion I'm that glad you we, we want to... We want to participate in some of the sports that we cover. So right now, the activities that are on the docket, the only one that, because mine was stolen as the fifth event, toward the game of 21, mm-hmm. so I had to come up with something else. But the game of 21, mini golf, froth, froth. Um, the thing that Postmaster almost killed me for guessing because I told him, I was like, yours is probably going to be uh, go-karting, isn't it? That'd be funny. So we're going to be uh, doing bluegrass indoor karting, best time. Okay. And then, of course, with you, no surprise to anyone, a round of tennis. So I have to come up with something. I have to come up with something good, something unique. How about you big golf? Um, well, I'm not the world's best golf. I do golf. Well, I'm, I'm not I the thought, world's I best maybe, golf. like, you know... 
longest drive. I, and that is something I'm leaning towards, you know, the longest drive. Which you tell me X I've never done before. <laughs> or, or, or longest putt made, I don't know. But we'll be doing that on the putt putt. Well, I mean longest, but I mean so longer than that. We have, we, have four, we have four events on the docket. I will be selecting my fifth. Um, there's no need, because I think we're going to start off with tennis. I think either tennis or indoor karting. So all frisbee golf. So I think um, there's no there's no rush for me to name right. mine. I think I'm gonna change mine to froth. But yeah, uh, it's definitely gonna be exciting. We're gonna put clips of each event on here and tell you who the winner is. I want dodgeball, and we'll go from there. That would just uh, you all would have bruises everywhere. Oh, how, how would we hit three person? <laughs> do- I wouldn't work. Three person dodgeball would work. Um, so now my wild card. I have two. Um, one is regarding my wild card last week, and now it's been fixed because YouTube is stupid and WWE is not. Um, what happened was Triple Threat Talk Episode 97 got removed because of, you know, copyright claims. Um, and it got taken down because of something that wasn't WWE related, which, let's face it, there was nothing WWE related in that video. So I told him about it, and he's like, you gotta fight this. And I was like, well, because if I do it, my account might get taken down, and I don't want to risk that. So I copied the email that was in there. It was ipagent at www.com. I didn't think it was a real email. Apparently it was. So I emailed it, told them basically I didn't think this video should have been copyrighted. It was false. You didn't tell me that. What? That uh, that it was an actual email. Yeah, it is. It actually was. Apparently it wasn't this guy's actual email, but I guess it was an email that somehow sent to WB and some, some legal counsel uh, found it and responded to it, which I appreciated. Um, cause I, uh, he could have just ignored it, but he obviously did, didn't, which I appreciated. So we, I got in contact with him told him, you know, there's no copyright in this thing. It was a Mentos commercial that got copyright. So, do you know what this means? What? I can say this and oh, know God. and know that it's going to be seen by someone at WWE. Okay. Hi, how are you <laughs> doing, <laughs> WWE? <laughs> anyway, anyway, so um, you know, I emailed and told them what was up. I saw you know, there's no copyright infringement here. The thing that was tied was a Mentos commercial, which is you know, obviously not what they were talking about. And he says, okay, I'll look at it. Make sure there's no uh, w visual content. He, he ruined the copyright. And the video's back up. There's not even a third. There's not even a tag for third party content. So I definitely appreciate W for doing that. And that's you know what? I'm gonna bash just a little bit before I get to my last walk card and wrap up the show. This sounds that WWE is a smart company. YouTube is not because they allow just any copyright content to get to get flagged like that, and because they don't know how to run their own algorithm. But WWE is smart because they look into these things if someone contacts them and then tells them what's up. So thank you WWE, and no thanks to you at YouTube. So my last wall card. A long card I haven't mentioned in a long time. My tennis, my former tennis team anyway, which I don't know if I explained on the show, I, I got I left the team because I wasn't getting I wasn't getting a lot of time on the court because it was it was a whole politic thing and, and I didn't get my money back, but that's a whole another long discussion that would take longer than we have left, which is like two minutes. But I'll say this real quick. Uh, I usually look at my team's like records, you know, every time one one or another just to see how they were doing because you know, if they lose it makes me feel good because it's like, you know what, I could have helped you. They went one and eight this season. They won one match. And it was one good. and eight. They went one and eight, and they won the one match they played was against the worst team. And so they were, they were the second worst team in the in, in the division. That's Hall of Fame for all the wrong reasons. So I was like, that's poetic justice because even though oh, so you know what, some of the matches they lost, they lost by three to two. So if they had me, they might have had the swing. So who knows? But you know what? It makes me feel good because you passed on me, and I know I'm good. I played I played a long time, and I can get into a match. And I can really get into it and really play well. One match doesn't mean anything. I think the one match we play one match and we got B, and then it's like, okay, he's not good. Well, it's one match, you break. Um, you know, it's good to see them go one and eight. I like seeing it. I like seeing they deserve what they get. I'm gonna try to do it next year. I still want to do it. Hopefully, I don't get the same result because I enjoy playing tennis and I want to play with other people. So um, that's my wild card, and that does it for the show this week. If you want to like us on Facebook, please like us on Facebook at facebook.com/slash Triple Threat Talk. You can follow us on Twitter. See a lot of my tennis tweets and probably a lot of his tweets about something else that's not tennis at Triple Threat Talk. So any comment or question? Pretty much you, anything other than tennis. Well, I don't even know about the final. Anyway, you can send us any comment or question you have or blogs at TripleThreatTalk.com. This is Big B. And we want to thank Cheryl and Terry Bodie for everything right. they did right. here. Right. Yeah, heck yeah. And Brian Cannon, of course, for being the new addition. We look forward to working with him many, 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 many more times in the future. And OVW for everything that they have done and will continue to do for us. This is Gary the Dr. Lockard for Jimmy Postmaster Jones Biggers as well. So long, everybody. This is Big B signing off. Huh? I'm going to go eat something, so I'm really hungry. I didn't know that. Good show. Short show.